us for Sunday worship service with Faith Temple Ndkog, in Warsaw, Virginia. Our pastor is Bishop Forrest Nance Jr. Join us on Zoom every Sunday at 11 a.m. on the go on your favorite streaming platforms, available on Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube, Anchor, Overcast, Spreaker, Good Pods, Radio Public, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Podbean, CastBox, Podacy, and many more. Online giving through Givelify.com. Type in Faith Temple and Cog to donate. Like and subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, Thread, and Twitter pages at FTNFCOG and our YouTube page at youtube.com slash at FTNFCOG. For more information about Faith Temple National Fellowship Churches of God, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. I hope you had a blessed day today. I think it went too strenuous for you. I'm just so glad you got here. Tune in for Bible study. I was going to talk on the Holy Spirit, uh, teach on the Holy Spirit tonight, but the Lord led me to uh, talk about uh, uh, our salvation. I guess you got to have to know what your salvation is before you can uh, seek the Holy Spirit and know that you've uh, been delivered from uh, sin. So that's where I'm coming from. If you got your pencils and papers, there's a lot of scriptures. Uh, we want to go over and look at them. Uh, and uh, then that way you can look at them when you go back home and have any questions. We always uh, can uh, answer your questions. Amen. Uh, uh, if we go a little slow, it's because I want to make sure uh, uh, people get a full understanding of uh, what it, um, accepting Christ and being recognized or being uh, affiliated with Christ is. First John 1 and 9, we're talking about identifying ourselves with Christ. Uh, how do we identify with Christ? First John 1 and 9. First John, in the back of the book, 1 and 9. No, chapter one, verse nine. Chapter one, verse nine. Verse nine. And it reads as such. I'm coming from the King James Version. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'll read it again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clean us from all unrighteousness. We are... Uh, when we confess that our sins, that we are sinners, and that he bore our sins on the cross, we are identifying ourselves with him in his work of atonement and cleansing from all sin. In other words, when we confess our sins, that we are sinners, and ask for forgiveness, we are recognizing the work, atonement work that Christ did for us. He took on our sins on the cross. So we are saved from our sins. We have accepted that we were sin, sinners, and then we are saying, we ask him for our sins, and the word God said he's faithful and uh, just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's where we are. So we are asking for our salvation. We confess that we are sinners. We ask for forgiveness. And the Bible, the word of God says, God, Jesus, will forgive us of our sins. And 
all unrighteousness. Now, that's what we are now saved. Now the thing is, we have to do something called crucify the old man. The old man. Now look at that in First John 1 and 9. You got that. Now go and go over to Romans. I mean, go, excuse me, Ephesians, excuse me, excuse me, 4 and 7. Romans? No, uh, Ephesians 4 and 7. Take your time. 4 and verse 27. And when we are uh, talking about the uh, old man, we're talking about crucifying the old man. We're talking about the old sins of man, the old things that we used to do, uh, uh, the nature, our sin nature has to be crucified. And that's when I'm talking about the old man. That's our sin nature. But we confess to Jesus that we was, uh, uh, we're sinners. We ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. He has forgiven us our sins now. The sin nature now, we're not long, we're no longer to walk in that sin nature. That sin nature being the old man. That's what we call him the old man now. The old man is sin nature. All right. So in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 27, it says, Give neither give place to the devil. Now we're going to stop right there for a minute. That just Look at that. In other words, your sin nature worked with, that's how Satan used your sin nature to sin. So when we get accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're no longer going to give way to Satan. We're crucifying the old man, the old sin nature. And now uh, we're going to give no place to the devil. When you're crucifying the old man, you give no place to the devil so you he can work through your uh through your sin sin nature to cause you to, to be in sin again. And I understand that the old man, when I'm telling you, you got to kill the old man, I'm talking about your sin nature, your sin nature. And we all were sinners. We were born in sin. That was the scripture said, but we recognize that we were sinners, and we asked for confess that, and then we asked Jesus Christ to forgive us those sins. Our old nature has been what crucified. We're now going to be a new creature. So when I'm talking about the old nature, old man, I'm talking about your old sin nature. Right? So I want to make sure I'm making it plain to y'all. The old sin nature. If you do, do not uh, give place to that, to say, to, to use that sin nature to cause you to go back into sin. All right, keep your books on Ephesians. That was Ephesians 4 and 27. Now I want you to turn go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 10. But let's go back up to uh, verse 8. Go up to 8. It says, For well, ye were sometime, sometime darkness. For ye were sometime darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth. Fifth chapter of Ephesians, verse eight. All right. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye the light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. We ask for forgiveness. We're now the old man. We're not going to give way to the old sin nature, the old man. And we're going to walk in the light that we are in Christ. All right? For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10 says, providing what is acceptable unto the Lord. And, and have no, look what it says now. 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. So whatsoever do make manifest, whatsoever do it make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. What he's saying is that we were crucified. The old man, we got to walk in truth and the light. We see, we know what, what used to be done in the darkness. We knew how the world operates in darkness, how the sin nature operated. But now uh, he's telling us we got to come out of that sin nature. So what we were acceptable things that we did in the sin nature, the old man, we now got to walk in the light, the newness of light that's in light that's in Christ Jesus. So we can't go back in the doctrine and do the things the way the world does it. We got to do it the way the light is, and it will reveal what is acceptable unto the God, to the Lord. All right? See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Walk circumspectly. Walk upright. Walk the path of righteousness, holiness. The old man didn't care what people thought. The old sin nature did what he wanted to do, when he wanted to do it, how he wanted to do it, to get pleasure out of it. Now the old man, the sin nature is no longer in control, and you have to have now, just you body, you're identifying yourself with Christ, so now uh, you got to walk circumspectfully and in righteousness and sanctification and holiness. That's what you got to walk in now. So, you see how it says, walk circumspectly, not as fools. You can't say one thing and do something else. But as wise. The world is caught up in everything. You, you know the things that are dark. You know they were food to stand. You know that. But now you're going to walk as a wise man. You walk as a wise woman. Circumspectly. I'm walking right in righteousness. I'm walking in holiness. I'm going to live the way God would have me live so I can be identified with Christ and being in Christ. All right. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God does not want us to sin. Remember, that's why we came Adam sin and that we were separated from God. Now you got to go and know that that, that separated you from God. Now that you have actual forgiveness. Your old sin nature has died and your old, the whole man has died, which I tell you again, is the old sin nature, not your body. And now you got to live the way God would have you live. And you got to know, have understanding, but understanding what the Lord, the will of the Lord is. The word of the Lord is that you live in righteousness. You live in uh, holiness. You live in the light of Christ and do God's will. And be not drunk with wine, we're in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The Spirit, we say, be filled with the Spirit. And we, that's what we're talking about, the Holy Spirit. But I want you to be first get understanding of your salvation and identifying the old man, the old sin nature, who you are proclaiming you're dead now. The old man is dead. I'm dead to him always. I'm dead to that way. I don't live like that no longer. I don't live like that no longer. I'm stressing that because you can't say you lived in, uh, 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 you heard people say, I'm going to lay down my religion. I'm going to lay down my way. You can't say that because then you're walking foolish. You're walking in unrighteousness. If you're saying you identify with Christ, you're going to walk in wisdom. And the wisdom would tell you to understand what that, because you used to be out there and you know what they're saying. So now your wisdom is telling you not to get upset, not to do, fly off the handle. Your wisdom would say, 
you have peace in Christ Jesus, he'll give you the understanding and you'll react to a situation in righteousness and holiness. And, 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 and not get upset because you know that you're praying. You know that you can't do anything about it. That's the normal way the reaction of the sinful man or woman reacts. I'm going to react the way Christ would react. I'm going to have to pray for them. I'm going to have to do unto them, treat them with love. New man walks in light. Old man walks in darkness. You've been God giving you the wisdom to know his will. To know your will to treat them, uh, love your brother as you would love yourself. Treat, know his will and know how to uh, act in those situations. God doesn't want us to be act, uh, unruly. We have to be filled with his spirit. And when the spirit is in control, then the spirit is going to lead and guide us. Do all truth. Spirit teach us how to react. But we got to understand, you first got to understand, and want to desire and know that the old man is dead. The old sinful man, sin nature is dead. So we, uh, two more things that we're going to be sit down on the scripture in a few minutes. First Peter, go back to First Peter. First Peter. Open y'all writing these scriptures down. Once you get them, so you go back and read them, so you get an understanding of how you got to do it. Now, remember I told you the enemy, the devil, Satan. All right? First, uh, Peter 5, verses 8 through 9. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because why? Because your adversary, the devil, As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You get that? First Peter, fifth chapter. First Peter, five, verse eight. Verse 8. Here God is saying, be sober, be vigilant, the devil, as a roaring lion, walked about seeking whom he may send. Picture this, saints. You have uh, done something and somebody wants to take revenge on you. Right? They're trying to destroy you. You live the life and now you're turning against them. You were friends with them. Now you're enemies with them. And now they're saying, I'm giving you all an example. They're saying, we're going to get you. And God is saying, the devil is out there to get you. The devil is out there to tempt you. The devil is out there to draw you back into sin. That's what he's out there. But your old man that he worked through, is not doing it. I'm not reading the scripture right now. I'm just giving you an example of what that scripture is saying. God is saying, be sober. Be a clear mind. Be vigilant. Be on God. Watch it. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in the face. So the enemy is going to come, the devil is going to come and try to draw you back into sin. God saying, you got to be sober, you got to be vigilant, you got to be watching. Because all he can do is roar like a lion, 
seeking somebody that he can devour, seeking you out so to cause you to draw you back into sin. Put a temptation there which makes you cause you to go back to sin. Do he know what you left? Yeah, he, remember, he, you left him. Your sin nature, you, you know that. You still remember that. But it's dead now. So those same things that draw you out there, it's not saying that you're not going to be tempted. You still see those same temptations. But the enemy uses those same desires, your fleshly desires, to put a temptation in front of you to draw you back into sin. The temptation is not, you're not sinning when you present it with temptation. It's when you go over into sin. When sin has, uh, 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 when you have done the sin, that's when you've gone back. So the enemy is presented, you got to be on guard. Whom you resist steadfast in the faith. You got to know that what we just read over there in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, Ephesians, he's faithful. He's just to deliver you. He's, He's there. He's done it. You got to believe that he is still protecting you. He's still providing a way for you to escape. Jesus will make a way for you to escape. But you got to be faithful and trust him. So the devil, I mean, the enemy is coming. The devil is coming. But you have Jesus. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the temptation he's presenting you is the same temptation that was in the world. But now you have something different. You have Jesus. You have I, I, I confess my faults. I recognize me being a sin. I confess my faults. The old sin man, sinful nature now is dead. Satan is coming back to try to draw me back. I got to be on guard that he does not draw me back. I got to be sober. I got to be vigilant. I got to be watching on God because he's trying to draw me back. He's trying to get me to go back, turn my back on Christ, to go back into the world, to rise up in the sin nature again so that I be backslidden. My job is to be faithful in Christ, believe that the word of God that I'm the sin nature is dead, and if it's dead, I'm gonna leave it alone. I got you gotta get that in your mind. That sin nature is dead, is dead, is dead. And I'm not gonna draw back into that again. Because I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that. And that's what right. Now, last scripture tonight that we're gonna be on for a while. Like, I want y'all really to get caught in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, and verse one through 14. Romans, the sixth chapter, verses one through six, 14. Romans six. six chapter. Fourteen, and remember, saints, you are not sinners when sin has. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's when sin has. Uh, when you yield to the sin, that's when sin you you raise it back up. It's not the temptation. It's when you yield to sin. It's when you yield to that sin. All right, you won't have thoughts. It's going to be thoughts presented to you. It's going to be temptation being presented in your eye. But you, if you don't yield to that, you're all right. 
is when you yield to that sin, is when you're joining yourself back over with the enemy, to the devil. As long as you resist the devil and have faith in Jesus Christ, what the word said, and believe that he has delivered you and the old man is dead to sin, you don't have to be, you, you're going to be in harmony with Christ. All right. Six verse. Chapter six, verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that God, grace may abound? Paul is writing the church. Said, Can we continue in sin that a great that grace may abound? Can we continue in sin? It'd be, it'd be all right. Grace is a little overlooked. No. He said, no. God forbid. Righteousness and unrighteousness can't walk together. Holiness and unholiness can't walk together. Just and the unjust can't walk together. If you are dead to sin, if you're dead to your sin nature, you should not be walking in sin. Say, God forbid, you cannot continue in sin if you recognize that your sin nature is dead. You, you ask, you confess that you are a sinner. You ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. When you did that, we've already read the scriptures, your sin nature is dead. Your, desi your, your, your desire for sin is dead now. Paul wrote the church because the church was still wanting to do this and still wanting to do that. Paul wrote the church and said, can you continue in sin if you're dead? God forbid God forbid, how shall we walk, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If something is dead, it's dead. It cannot walk around. That's the same question with the sin in, in our lives. If we're dead to sin, don't con you can't continue walking in sin. You can't continue in practicing sin. You're dead. If something is dead, it's dead. It's buried. It's in the ground. Your sin nature is buried. You have to get that uh, fully grasp on that because you are a new creature in Christ now. The, old, the new man wants to live. But the new man can't live until you recognize that you are the old man is dead. The old sin nature is dead. Paul asking a simple question. Can something that's dead live any longer? If, 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 uh, if a, uh, uh, a person dies, they're dead. And you bury them. The same is with your sin nature. When that sin nature is dead, you bury it. Nobody goes back and pick up, look, dig up a dead body. It's dead. All right. Next verse. It says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. I'm trying to tell you, they're, they're putting more concrete on that you sin that you're dead. When Jesus was buried, we know that he was buried. We, our sin nature was buried also. When we when he took on the sins on the cross, took the sin off, and we accepted that we have faith in that he did that, when we recognize that that he took a bird, our sin nature is buried. We in coalition with him, we it's buried. We gotta believe that. Cause you gotta have that in your mind. Cause the enemy gonna come and mess with your mind. Gonna draw you out in the sin. Want you to put a temptation in there. I want you to just look at the lust of the eyes. He wants you to hear, see the lust of the flesh. He wants you to have to operate under the pride of life. But you got to know that your sin that ah, I'm not that not, not going to work no longer because I have Jesus and I'm recognizing that. Baptized into his death. Therefore, we are bapt buried with him by baptism into the death. Like that, that like Christ, as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. 
Christ raised up from the dead. Your sin nature is not going to raise up from the dead. The new man is raised. A new creature now is raised. Christ raised from the dead. He wasn't the same one that went down because mommy told him, don't, don't touch me because I got to go to the farm. When we rise up, we are new in Christ. We are new nature, new man in Christ, new woman in Christ because of sin nature that we buried it. The power of God rose up Jesus in the glory. Everything he rose us up. They didn't get the glory out of our lives. Because we're now walking in holiness. We're now walking in righteousness. We're now walking in just. We now want to be obedient to his word. We now want to seek his face. We're praying now. And, and we were trying to do what God's will is. The Holy Spirit, when we get the Holy Spirit, he's going to reveal to us what God's will is. We know that God's will is living in goodness. We know that God's will is loving your brother. As you do unto your brother, you do unto you. Uh, you. It's, it's just it changes our way of thinking when we've been raised in Christ. Hallelujah. So in the likeness of it, knowing this, the way he says in verse six, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. The old man is crucified with him. Ray was crucified. Ray's sin nature was crucified with Christ. So it's not Ray any longer. The sin nature now is raised in, uh, in Christ with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we serve should not serve sin. That's a big statement there, saints. It says, knowing this, that our old man, old sin nature, is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. Sin is at the door. We got the option to let it in and or serve it. We got the option to rebuke it and continue to serve Christ. Nobody can say once saved, always saved. Sin is there. Remember the devil, your adversary, the devil, he's a, he's the enemy now. He's your he's what's what he's trying to do, get you back. He's there doing what? Walking around, seeing whom he might what? So if he's seeking looking for somebody, he's looking, he know your weak points. But because you are now in Christ. He also know he got to get you where your mind ain't on Christ. He also got to get catch you in a weak moment where you 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 you're in a pity party, or the enemy is bombarding you, and you, but you got to go back to let me grab the word of God, let me go pray, let me let me let me seek God, let me let me let me let me, let me, let me come against the enemy. I can't fight him because flesh is not flesh and blood. My weapons of my warfare on flesh and blood day long. I got to fight him using this word of God. I got to fight him with the spirit. I got to fight him with Jesus. Come y'all understand what I'm saying. I, I just want you to know, henceforth, we should not serve sin. Sin, sin, sin. <laughs> is the world on, operating in sin? Yes, the world is operating in sin. Is we're doing is evil and all that stuff? Yes, it is. That's why you got to be totally different. When you get upset because the man cut you off on the road, you got to recognize and see what, what's been temptation put there. How you react now? Are you going to get mad? Or are you going to look at that and just say, count it all joy? It's how we react to things. Uh, um, people. People talk about you all the time. People want to do things all the time. Christ said it like this, saints. He said, they hate me. The world hate me. They're going to hate you. So why do we get upset when the world don't want to accept us? This is a lonely walk. But I'm walking with Christ. I'm walking with being led by the Holy Spirit. I'm walking a different walk. 
I'm not going to please the world. The world not going to agree with me, my lifestyle, because they're in darkness. I'm walking in light. They lack darkness. I lack light. You gotta understand, we can't serve sin. Serving sin, it puts you in harmony with the devil. When you don't wanna serve sin, and you, and you look at sin and you rebuke it, you're in harmony with Christ. You're, you're now proving that you wanna walk in light and not darkness. For he that is dead is freed from sin. We are freed from sin. Remember, uh, you just a metaphor when um, blacks were in, in slavery and they were free. How many of y'all believe they all just took off running? We're free, we're free. They ain't high wind. You know, some still said, Master, I want to stay here and serve you. I want to still continue to be your slave. I don't know what I'm going to do without I just continue to be in. I don't know how I'm going to make money. I don't know how I'm going to live. I just stay in sin. I'll stay your slave. That's the same thing we do when we, Christ has freed us from sin. We turn to the devil and say, I don't know how to live out there in the world, so I'm going to stay in sin. I know I'm free, but I'm going to stay in sin. You can't be free if you stay in sin because the wages of sin is what? Death. And nobody, oh, no, 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 you, you want, you can't say I'm this and you want to stay voluntarily, go back into sin. We are freed from sin. Sin has no more hold on us. We are freed from sin. This, I'm just reading what the scripture says. So that's why I told you write the scriptures down. So you got questions, you go back to the scriptures, write it down. And then you come, when you come back, See me again, you want to ask those about your question, and we can talk about it. But I give them, get it done, you write the scriptures down so that you can study them. You have questions, you, you can read them and go, oh, what is God saying there? But if you don't write them down, you don't have questions, and you just slip, and you know things come in your mind and slip right on out of your mind. At least it do mine. Now, verse uh, uh, 8 says, Now if we be dead with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him. <laughs> That's a great, oh my God, hallelujah. Now, if we be dead with Christ, you know, when he died, we, we died also in sin. We believe, you got to believe this, we shall also live with him. You're living with Christ. You're living in new life. As you grow into uh, from babes to start growing in maturity, maturity, you start recognizing the word of God. It gives you free, the freedom. It gives you more freedom than just from sin. It's, it's a new li lifestyle in Christ. This a new lifestyle, and there's no limits. Just as there were no limits to Christ, there will be no limits to you. Sin is no longer the, uh, an option. I'm, I'm free. I'm, 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 I can. <laughs> I'm living in Christ, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death had no more dominion over him. Doesn't have death or the hold no more dominion over us. Can we live? Is Christ living? Yes. Yeah. Where's Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father? We don't die. We go to sleep, yeah. knowing that we're going to be resurrected, knowing that we're going to be, everything's going to be put come in a crinkle of an eye. We're going to be, since we are alive. Death has no more domain over us. It does, has, has, has no more, shouldn't, fear has no more dominion over us. Because fear cancels on faith. Fear puts a, a, a stop to anything you believe. It's fear that causes us to, oh, I'm, I'm uh, causes us to not walk by faith. So the Bible scripture here, uh, Paul wrote saying that if we did in Christ, 
being raised from the dead, death, he's he not going to die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Has no more dominion over him. Look what verse 10 says. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. How many times? Once. How many times? Once. How many times? Once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Eternity. He died, had to die once for man. But he lives unto God now. He died unto death one time. And now he lives unto God. We die into sin nature, die. But now the new creature liveth unto God. Liveth unto God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Mm. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are alive. We are alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are alive. Living unto God through Christ Jesus. Living unto God. Living in the abundance of God. No longer dead, but alive. Living unto God. We died. The old man died. The new man now is living unto God. <sighs> My God. Mm. Now verse tw uh, number 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. If you do not have faith and you know you're living unto God, you shouldn't have sin. You should have. What is it? Let not sin therefore reign in your what? Mortal body. Not immortal, this mortal body. Don't let sin there. Don't let hatred live there. Don't let confusion live there. Don't let the sin nature really there. If you got questions about sin, look in Galatians, the fruit of sin, the works of sin, rather, the works of the flesh. And and y'all want to write this down? And I, you, well, I'm not going to turn to it. I'm just going to write it down for you. Write it down in Galatians, the fifth chapter. So y'all want to write this down. Um, uh, verse try to start at uh, verse 16 go down to 21 no verse 19 and go to 21 fifth chapter of Galatians start with the G-A-L fifth chapter Verse 19 to 21. That's for, for your notes. You want to look for what sin is. Some of the things that the, the works of the flesh produces. All right. Back over in Romans now. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Look verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness under sin. Yielding your members unto right unrighteousness unto sin. So when you react to something, you're yielding your members to sin. When you uh, say it's all right to sin, you're yielding. You're co-signing. You're co-signing a lie. You believe you 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 just want to say you lie. That's what you're doing. When, when 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 unrighteousness is done and you don't stand against unrighteousness, you're doing unrighteousness. Because you're supposed to be light. Your light don't look like dark. When light comes in, darkness goes. But when you say it's all right, that what the darkness is doing is all right, then your light is going out. And you're walking in darkness. You're yielding your members unto right unrighteousness. Basic, basic salvation here we're talking about. Babes in Christ, you got to learn, you got to realize, hallelujah. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, unto sin, unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. 
Why would you want to be, you know you're alive, why would you want to act like you're dead? When you yield yourself unto unrighteousness, you're acting like you're dead. When you yield yourself to righteousness unto God, you lie. So why play like you're dead? You want to be like the world? You want to look like the world? Well, the world is dead. The world got damnation on it. God, you have accepted Jesus Christ. You have but got your sins forgiven and you're freed from sin. But you want to yield your members to unrighteousness rather than yield your members to righteousness? Who wants to be dead? If I ask somebody in here right today, if they want to die right now, they say no. So why do we want to go back into sin? Because we're dead. We like being dead. When I'm, I'm, I'm freed from sin, we want to go back into bondage of sin. When the wages of sin is death. I don't want to go back to death. I'm free from death. I have life. So I'm going to yield my members to God. I'm going to yield my members to, uh, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Righteousness unto God. Yield your members. Everything you stand for, everything God stands for, I'm going to yield my members. I'm a, that's what I'm going to do. I want to do righteousness. I'm a, I want to do righteousness. I want to do right. I'm going to yield to God. Because the old man, I'm freed from sin. The old sin nature is dead. I'm not going to go back into my sin nature. I'm freed from that. I'm freed from death. I'm freed from sin. Last verse, thanks. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, you can make a choice and yield to sin and it have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. But as we're learning in Christ and learning it in the word of God, God don't make nobody be sin saved. These are your free will. You free will and said, I recognize myself as a sinner. You free will say that uh, 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 I don't want to sin no longer and ask for forgiveness of your sin. But when you say, I'm going back, I'd rather live in darkness, I'd rather go back into bondage, I'd rather be the slave to sin, then you're saying, hold on, God. I'm not ready right now. I'm going to go do this. You, you're you saying you rather live in, in, in bondage to sin. You rather live in darkness rather than light. I'm, I'm just going to go that way. That's foolishness. Foolishness. And we don't walk in foolishness. We walk upright. We walk in righteousness. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin don't have dominion over you now. Sin don't have dominion over you right now. You're free. You're free to do what God wants you to do. To be what God wants you to be. To do the will of God. To bless, to speak the word of God. To be a witness for God. To walk in righteousness unto God. That's what you've been set free to do. Uh, but you are not under the law, but under the grace. The law couldn't save nobody. The law couldn't do it. That's why Christ came. That's why Christ came. The law could not do it. Couldn't save nobody. Couldn't keep man. Couldn't deliver man. But Christ came was crucified, took on our sin. Took on our sin that we could be free from that sin. So your sin, sin nature came out and was crucified. I don't want that sin nature no longer. I'm dead to that. I'm going to now be the new man and walk in righteousness and serve God.
That's that's what we gotta do. Now, as we study this, you that should be strengthening your faith. And these scriptures, when you go back to study these scriptures, should should uh, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal or ask God to pray to reveal the scriptures to you so you can see what you got. Because you got a you got a, a, a abundance of gold here. And the enemy wants to take it from you. He's mad. He's calling it our adversary. And he's looking to kill something. He's looking to kill the weak. He's looking to kill who's ever he can devour. He can't kill you. He's walking around as a lion. Ruined. Making a whole lot of noise. And can't do nothing. Had <laughs> no more power. Jesus took that power. So all he can do is make, make some noise. Make people scared of this and scared of that. But the word says, God said, I'm free from that. I'm dead to that. You, 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 your works don't work, your, your tricks don't phase me no more. Praise God. Anybody got any questions? No questions. All right. I hope y'all got your scriptures. I hope you go home and read them or uh, wherever you're at. Pass them on to the saints that weren't here. Uh, but uh, just study them. Study them. And see what see what really what you really got. Sometimes you can't get it all in the Bible study at night, but study those and see what you really got. Uh, and we're gonna continue this. And I hope you Greg you get this foundation of being born again. You get this foundation that you've been a new creature in Christ, and your old creature has died. That'll help you. So that you can lay in and be baptized and seek the Holy Spirit, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But you gotta have a foundation so that you know and walk in power. And Christ told his disciples, go in the upper room until you've been endured with power. Stay there. Stay there. Until you've been there. It's important to have the Holy Spirit. This gives us power. And you gotta have a good foundation to know what you got. Because people can be deceived. And you gotta know what the scriptures say and what you, what you and, the, and what the Bible the scriptures say that you, about your salvation. How you are free. You don't have to live in sin. Nobody has to live in sin. And especially if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are free from sin. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we truly thank God for this night. Amen. Uh, uh, we'll uh, be ready here back Sunday. Amen. Amen. And, uh, we hope to see you uh, on Sunday again. Amen. We've come to the month of January. It's coming to an end, Saints. Already 2024. Ready to go, ready, getting ready to go into February. 2024. One month already down. And you know them must go by fast. The days go by, the bad, the weeks go by. Next thing we know, we're standing in December. Talking about 2025. Ain't God good? He brought us through 2023. Now we're in 2024. Praise God. We are he, He's blessing us, amen. Keeping us. Amen. Continue, neighbor. Let us do the things that we do. Amen. God is good, saints. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we give you the glory and all the praise. All honor go to you, God, for you are God. We ask you tonight, God, hallelujah, some that might be ailing in their bodies. We ask you to touch them with your mighty power, with your right hand. Let's wave it their way, Father. Lord, let them know by his stripes we are healed. Lord, Father God, give them a revelation of that scripture, Lord. Know that, hallelujah, that they, these are the things, the promises of your word. Father God, we <laughs> my God, hallelujah. Gotta know, let the saints remember that they are free from sin. Hallelujah. The old sin nature is dead. Uh, Father, and they are new creatures. We are new bodies, new 
uh, servants in God. Hallelujah. You know, God just bless them. Answer their questions, Lord. Let them write down their questions. And we come back, Lord, and study them and read the questions and answer the questions, Father God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless right now. Help her to write on his job, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Make ways for him, Father. Uh, open doors for him, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless right now, God, hallelujah, at the household of Dominique and Jonathan, Father. Oh, our loved ones, God, hallelujah. Just save them, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Well, move in a mighty way. Let us be like the light, hallelujah, to this dark world, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Let us go out and proclaim your gospel. Ah, my, let us be witness for you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, I ask you, amen, be mindful of uh, Faith Temple as we are going forth, amen, to build a sanctuary, amen, that we can come together. Hallelujah. To praise God, worship God, and hear the word of God. Receive teachings, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So that we can be in fellowship in a one place. Hallelujah. The technology is good. But we are seeking God for and asking God for a brick and mortar building that we can come. Hallelujah. And be in fellowship and worship together with the saints. Amen. If you do that, saints, hallelujah. We need funds. Amen. So do we coming off a great victory in one thing and we're going to turn around and go back into we let so uh, you go to our website it says how you can give uh, do you and uh, just uh, follow the directions and you can give that away if you can't give that away amen on our website you can mail us our offering in amen so hallelujah however you want to support Please, we just ask you now. Amen. If anything else, Elder, you got anything? No. <laughs> Amen. No, no other questions? Amen. Praise God. We're going to close out. Amen. Thank you again for y'all coming. Amen. <laughs>